Hello everybody, welcome back to the PC Final Frontier YouTube channel. Today we're going to discuss nerve root affection in stenosis versus herniation. We're going to discuss it at the two main levels, that is the cervical spine and the lumbar spine, as most common affection happens at these two levels. Let's first discuss about the cervical spine. Now, what happens at the cervical spine is that irrespective of the pathology being stenosis or disc herniation, the nerve root in, an, in basic anatomy passes below the level, correct? Which means the nerve root affected is the one below between the two levels if we're to discuss. Now we can see in this picture here, this level between the C6 and this level between the C7 level, as an example, the C7 nerve root here, the red part would be affected as the one passing below would be affected. That is easy and simple for the cervical spine. Now, if we try to discuss the same issue at the lumbar spine, the two different pathologies will have two different affection. And there is a reason why. What happens in disc herniation is that the nerve root that gets affected and compressed is not the exiting nerve root, but the transversing nerve root. So in this picture here, L4 and L5, we would see that here L4 is the exiting nerve root, but L5 here is the transversing nerve root. Now, so in disc herniation, if you see here, this is the disc, the transversing, the one below the L5 nerve root will be affected, as you can see from the picture. And in stenosis, what happens is the compression will be up, out at the level above. That means the existing nerve root because there is compression or and closing of the foramina. If we take an example between L4 and L5, then as our explanation sits well, we would say at the disc herniation, L5 would be affected again because it being the transversing nerve root. And for lumbar stenosis, L4 would be affected as the exiting nerve root because of the compression of the foramina. Thank you.